being an early adopter of new technology or new products can always bring with it certain risks. <laughs> In the case of the EK Quantum Vector RTX for the 3090, the backplate can apparently cause a lot of coil whine. So we're going to dig into how to fix the coil whine if you're experiencing it, as well as some of the design changes that were done on the installation of the backplate um, that was recommended by EK in order to try to fix some of the coil whine issues that are present. We'll take temperature and performance measurements before and after installing the new screws and the new thermal pads just to ensure that everything is working as it should. So let's get into looking at, first of all, the problem. What is coil whine? What does it sound like? Allow me to demonstrate. Coil whine happens on your graphics card when there's too much pressure being applied onto the inductors. What that can cause is normally these inductors vibrate at a very high frequency, something that you wouldn't normally hear with your own ears. But if you apply too much pressure, then you slow down the vibration of those inductor coils and bring the, vibra the sound of that vibration out into uh, what humans can hear. And so that's what we're basically experiencing right now is the coil whine from the inductors uh, that are just vibrating. Now this won't cause any damage to your PC, this won't cause any damage to your graphics card, but it is extremely annoying when you go through the effort of water cooling your system to make it quiet. So we'll take the back plate off, we'll replace each of these screws with a uh, eight millimeter screw instead of a seven millimeter screw as recommended by EK, and we're gonna be changing out some of the thermal pads as well. Situations like this are why I recommend making sure that you install a drain valve in your water cooling system. Uh, in this case, you can easily drain the fluids from your system without having to worry about leaking everywhere and all over the place. So for me, I installed just a Bits Power black drain valve. And all I'm going to do is install one of these G1 quarter EK fittings. Uh, we've got a drain tube that we created uh, from a bend that didn't go very well. It actually cracked at one point, so we just uh, salvaged that to use it to create a drain pipe. So what we'll do is we'll just slide the tube in there. We'll slide this in here. You want to be careful sliding this in just because there is um, a rubber seal in there as well. Okay, screw that in. Not too terribly tight. Doesn't need to be that tight. The seals are holding it in place. And now, we have a drain spout. Now with all things, you wanna make sure that you've cleaned this out with distilled water. We're actually gonna reuse the fluid, uh, so we're gonna capture it into our distilled water container as well. So now comes the fun part of removing the lines that are going to the GPU so that we can remove the GPU to service it. Now this is acrylic tubing, so acrylic tubing is not as forgiving as PETG, which means it's very possible that this tubing could crack or shatter while we're trying to remove it. And if that happens, we'll have to uh, bend some new tubes. So first we're going to have to remove the back plate because the revision is the revision actually has to do with the back plate itself. So we'll get all these little screws out of here. And these are the seven millimeter screws. Now EK has changed the design to use eight millimeter screws. The back plate itself isn't changing. It's just the layout and usage of the thermal pads and the length of the screws so that it's not applying so much pressure and theoretically should reduce the coil whine that we're experiencing on the card. And a lot of people have mentioned that they've had good success with this. We had our maximum memory junction heat hitting about 86 degrees Celsius with the back plate as it is installed right now. Now we're going to not be really comparing apples to apples because we're actually not gonna use EK's thermal pads. We're going to swap out 
and use the Thermal Grizzly Minus Pad 8. This has um, about double the thermal transfer capabilities. And so we should see, hopefully, some benefit moving to the new thermal pads. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to remove this back plate. Now, this is where it gets kind of challenging because these thermal pads can be sticky. And we did have some th thermal pads stick to the back plate. So originally, this was to be a uh, two millimeter thermal pad, which it is. And originally, these were supposed to be one millimeter thermal, pa thermal pads. And uh, the one millimeter thermal pads is what they're saying is causing the um, coil wine just because there's too much pressure being applied between the back plate and the block. And so uh, this was 1.5 millimeter, as were these. These are also 1.5 millimeter. And then this here is a 1.5 millimeter length strip as well, uh, with this being one millimeter. So we're gonna increase the pads on the VRAM to two millimeters. Uh, and uh, make a couple changes. We'll switch out to the eight millimeter screws and then we'll see uh, if it makes uh, a huge difference as far as temperature uh, reductions. There are also some um, pads that were originally on the original back plate that were uh, much thinner than uh, half a millimeter. These were like very paper thin pads. We also included those and moved those over when we uh, incorporated the back plate initially. Uh, what we've ended up with is we have, this is a two millimeter. This is two, 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 two. This is two as well. We've got one millimeter, uh, one millimeter here and here, one millimeter here. We've got uh, 1.5 millimeter here, one millimeter here, one here, and one here. And then over here, we did two millimeters. And that just ensured that we had proper coverage and fitment for every component that we're gonna be wanting to make contact with the back plate. Now, again, some of these components aren't even really uh, clearly defined in EK's uh, instructions, but I found it important to ensure that the fitment is good. So with this layout, the fitment is actually going to be ideal and you're going to get full coverage on your back plate to be allowed to use the eight millimeter screws that should relieve some of the pressure uh, and hopefully get rid of that coil wine. So we'll put the back plate on now with the eight millimeter screws and then we're going to go test this thing and see how it turns out. Now, these are the longer 8mm screws that EK has provided. They were kind enough to mail those over. So I'm going to not tighten these all the way initially, because initially I'd like to get kind of an even amount of pressure across the back plate. Well, I'll just hand tighten it. It doesn't have to be reefed on there. So if all goes well, the pressure should be a little less with the eight millimeter screws than with the seven millimeter screws. And we should get uh, a little bit better overall temperature reduction on the VRAM hotspots on the back plate now that we're using the Thermal Grizzly pads. So what's the verdict? Well, the eight millimeter screws and the two millimeter thermal pads didn't really make a difference. The card still makes the same coil wine sounds. Uh, it might be a little bit less than it was before, but not by much. So ultimately EK's quantum vector water block and backplate, uh, they do provide really good cooling for the 3090, but you're gonna get a little bit of coil wine. Um, I game with mostly headphones, so the coil wine doesn't really bother me all that much. Although, you know, if you're gonna spend the money on a big expensive water cooling system, you'd like to have something that uh, doesn't have any difference from the air-cooled card. The air-cooled card had absolutely no coil wine whatsoever. So to get the coil wine on the water cooling is a little bit frustrating. Now, how about the move over to the Thermal Grizzly thermal pads? Well, 
the uh, memory junction temperature dropped from 86 degrees to 66 degrees max. So we've got a 20 degree Celsius performance improvement on cooling uh, for the memory just by switching over to the Thermal Grizzly thermal pads. So I can definitely say with certainty that EK's thermal pads don't really provide the same kind of thermal heat dissipation that you'll, you're gonna get from a Thermal Grizzly thermal pad. So if you're gonna get a water block um, and you wanna be a first adopter, you're, you may end up with something that has coil wine or maybe some fitment issues or maybe even some other issues altogether. I've seen some horror stories of people getting water blocks and shorting out components and frying expensive graphics cards. Now that didn't happen here. This graphics card works great. The water block fitment is good. The backplate fitment is good. Although I have to say with the uh, eight millimeter screws, it does sound a little bit less like there's coil wine, but it's still very prominent and very, very much there. But uh, you know, if you're gonna be moving to getting a water block and getting a backplate and doing a full water-cooled solution for your PC, uh, make sure that you're looking into the thermal pads that are used and what they're rated at. The EK thermal pads are only rated at four watts per meter Kelvin, while the Thermal Grizzly pads, the minus eight pads that I'm using, uh, are rated at eight watts per meter Kelvin. So they are way more efficient. And again, we're dropping 20 degrees Celsius just by switching thermal pads. And not only that, but it's had the uh, other effect of having a, an overall cooler graphics card. So the graphics card is actually running about five degrees cooler overall, uh, even on the GPU die itself. Now there are some much better uh, thermal pads available, either from Fuji Poly or from uh, Thermalrite. Thermalrite's Odyssey pads do 12.8 watts per meter Kelvin, which is pretty substantial when you think about it. Now, if you're gonna go and spend the money on a fully water-cooled system, and you're gonna get thermal pads that maybe don't perform as well as they could, it might be worthwhile if you're looking for overclocking and keeping your system as cool as possible, that you might wanna throw out the EK thermal pads and just get some uh, higher end, either thermal grizzly pads or even something beyond that. I'm willing to bet that if I swap out all the thermal pads with thermal grizzly pads, that the graphics card is gonna run even cooler and have even higher overclocking potential. But as far as fixing the coil wine on the 3090, it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to do that with the EK water block. You know, there have been different suggestions, people using nail polish and other thermal pads on different parts of the 3090 in order to get the vibration to stop and for the sound from the inductors to stop. So it looks like EK's suggestion for getting rid of the coil wine, switching to eight millimeter screws and swapping out the thermal pads on the memory from uh, one millimeter to two millimeter pads doesn't seem to have made any difference uh, worth writing home about. We'll look into some other options and maybe try a few other things, but it does take a substantial amount of time to drain the system, pull the card out, take it apart, swap the thermal pads, put it all back together and fill it up again. Um, so it's not something that I want to do on a regular basis. So if any of you have any comments or suggestions for how we could eliminate coil wine on the quantum vector Strix for the 3090, um, I'm all ears. So if you're considering water cooling your computer system, you may not want to be the first person getting in line to get a hold of a new product. And if you are water cooling, look into getting better thermal pads than what may be provided, either stock with your air-cooled card or from companies like EK with your water-cooled card. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.